Okay, we have uh, not network types, but uh, network uh, topologies um, to deal with here. And uh, again, uh, we are still at the data link layer. We're, we're talking about layouts, but we're not talking about addressing. Um, we are uh, talking about the, the physical layout, and this does have some implications for the addressing uh, possibilities. Um, anyway, we have the, uh, the good old bus. Uh, one piece of cable, uh, all the nodes are connected along that piece of cable, which may wind and twist and go everywhere. But as far as the network is concerned, everybody is on the same uh, length of cable. Um, uh, taps off it or drill into it, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> again, um, Ethernet uses this. And again, we've talked about Ethernet with regard to the... Um, uh, half wavelengths um, which uh, indicate how often you can connect uh, devices to the, the cable um, the, in terms of the spacing uh, and that is uh, an important uh, consideration and one that very few people even know about these days however um, Okay. Um, so, uh, we got media access control here as an example of traffic, or traffic as media access control. Anyway, um, so we've got the ring. Uh, again, I've talked about the fact that uh, token passing and ring topologies are so uh, closely connected that a lot of people think that they cannot be separated, but they can. Um, a ring is just a, a ring. It's, uh, you know, a bus with the ends fastened together. Um, and, uh, you know, we got fiber optic cable, we have simplex, uh, so we have pairs and, and therefore counter-rotating rings. Um, interestingly, that uh, gives us a bit of resilience in terms of if a link is broken, uh, if one break is made in a ring, um, we can still uh, have full network connectivity because, of course, they you know, can go one direction and then the other direction uh, because of the counter-rotating uh, architecture. Um, a star... Um, now, a star topology, uh, I, yeah, I have a bit of problems with this one. I, I tend to think that um, uh, a star generally is either a um, bus with long drops on it or a folded ring. Um, and so when, you know, if, if somebody is pushing a star topology, uh, you know, find out um, how uh, it's it's actually working, and uh, uh, see what you can do about that. Um, now there are tree topologies. These are um, not as prevalent. Um, they certainly do exist, and um, they can be used. Uh, there was um, ArcNet was a, a famous uh, and very widely used. Um, local area network topology and uh, uh, used a, a combination of um, bus and, and tree uh, topologies. It was uh, rather interesting what you uh, could and could not connect and where you could make drops and, and that sort of thing. And then the last one, my personal favorite, because I'm big into uh, business continuity, is the mesh. Now, mesh is everybody is connected to everybody as far as possible. Now, this um, obviously uh, has great advantages in terms of uh, continuity and resilience. Um, 
However, it does have an enormous cost in terms of the connections and the complexity of the network. Um, so, you know, if you got two nodes on a, a mesh network, you only need one cable, uh, maybe two. Um, if you've got uh, three nodes, you've got three cables. Um, if you've got four nodes, you've got six cables. You know, and by the time we get to ten, we got a thousand cables. We, um, you know, the complexity, the cost of the connections um, does go up, and you need to take that into consideration. Uh, but it does, uh, you know, give us uh, the, you know, resilience. This was the uh, a mesh topology, a fully meshed topology, was the way. Uh, the uh, telephone company originally um, had its uh, systems, um, the switching stations, the 10 major switching stations. Um, they uh, uh, were all interconnected with co connections to each other uh, so that there were, you know, all kinds of options in terms of getting around um, overloading of the systems or broken cables or you know whatever uh, would have happened there uh, uh, they even had it, it wasn't actually 10 switching stations there was an 11th switching station which was um, fully operational but unused so that if any one of the switching stations went down uh, the uh, 11th could be pulled into service and it had connections to all the others so uh, yeah, um, now this uh, uh, is, is one of the reasons why um, the uh, telephone service um, used to be kind of the standard for business continuity and resilience, um, that uh, the telephone was in fact more reliable than the power system. Uh, and. You know, so keep that in, in mind in, in terms of you know, how important is uh, resilience and availability to you.